All right, everybody. Welcome back to Interpreting the Stars. My name is Dave, and today I got a couple really special guests joining me to talk about their new movie called Rebroken. It's coming out uh, on digital everywhere uh, next week, March 7th. Their names are Scott Ham Duenas and Kip Tribble. Welcome, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, 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 thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first of all, before we get into the movie itself, one thing that I like to ask everybody is basically before you you know, ventured into the world of film, what was it that you did for work and uh, what changed and made you want to take that leap? We'll start with you, Scott. Oh, well, mine's the, I mean, I did a lot of jobs uh, throughout the time, but the main thing I did was like, like everybody in that when you first get to LA and, or when you're out here uh, is a bartended, bartended and served and waited tables for, uh, for a long, long time. And then there was also a period at the end when I started working where I needed an even more flexible schedule. I was working enough to not be able to bartend anymore, but just not enough to, I still needed to supplement my income. I was doing a little uh, construction on the side, and which is funny because anybody that knows me knows I am not very handy. <laughs> <laughs> I started out in radio actually, um, and then, then went into uh, the film world. And then when I moved to LA, same thing as Scott. Um, you know, started waiting tables, went to bartending, and that's how Scott and I met, bartending, many, true. many, yeah. many years ago. Many um, years ago. Yeah, and did that uh, off and on, and uh, thankfully haven't been able, haven't had to do that for a long time, but uh, yes. yeah, that's pretty <laughs> much it. You know, we, we are we are cliches. We are the, the bartending, table waiting artists. Well, yes. Yeah, well, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a, it's a great, I, it's a you know, look, I'm glad I'm out of it too, man. But there's not a lot of things that you get that kind of flexibility and make yeah. that kind of money to still pursue, whether you're a student or you want to be in film or anything where you're, you know, you can make good money and have a flexible schedule and be able to get shifts covered uh, uh, on a dime. Uh, it's a great industry. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Uh, yeah, first of all, Rebroken. Uh, I did get to a chance to see this uh, a few days ago. I reviewed it. I, uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit because, like I said in my review, I like when science fiction meets up with grief, kind of meets in the middle, and creates kind of a, I don't know, an original concept, you know, and I was really glued in. So, nice. first and foremost, I enjoyed Thank it. You. Thank um, you. You both wrote it, though, so you both have writing credits. So my question is, you know, how was the writing process? Was this something that you worked together on side by side, bounced ideas off of, or was it like Scott, you you came up with the idea and you pass it along to Kip to write the screenplay for? You nailed it on at the end. That's pretty much <laughs> it. I, I um I, when we get asked this question, I kind of take the lead because this is kind of the order that it happened in. I um I like to uh, scribble down short stories or ideas for movies all the time, and I got these little notebooks and and, and comp logs laying around my house everywhere. And uh, if I think they're good ones, I, I, I go back to them and rebroken. I kept going back to and back to and back to until I basically had a short story or like a um, an episode of a television show, like a half hour episode worth of a. a a story and then I go I bring in the big guns and go to my uh, <laughs> my partner here who, who's a fantastic writer and uh, I'm blessed with a couple friends that are writers but Kip's my main dude and I send it to him and said what do you think and I know he's gonna be honest and I know he's gonna say let's let's look at let's send me something else or or why don't you why don't you look over it a little more and I got some ideas to throw to you but this he kind of uh, you know I'll let him go from here but he kind of took it and ran and really did the bones and the meat of this screenplay and he he really uh, took it to the ne my little short story. And he took it to the next level. <clears throat> if you can, yeah, you know. yeah. I mean, and you know what I did is, um, <clears throat> you know, when Scott sent us over, it was, you know, primarily the the bones of the story is about a father going through um, grief, uh, you know, you know, dealing with the loss of his daughter, uh, spending his you know days and nights just in a fog, so to speak, um, drinking himself into a coma or kind of reliving that grief every day. And so I kind of just stepped back from that and added the grief counseling group, all those characters, you know, started weaving a, a, a story through there and uh, built built a mystery out of it. And it, it kind of started taking a life on its own there. You know, we knew we wanted to make a thriller out of it and we kind of knew what the ending was going to be. But, uh, you know, then Supernatural and sci-fi and a lot of other different elements started seeping in there, which was fun. 
Yeah, awesome. I'm guessing that was more or less the same kind of structure that you took with uh, a previous movie of yours, The Stay, as you both wrote that as well. We uh, did. It, uh, I would say a little. That's why I'm, I think when we uh, when we credited it on Rebroken, I'm credited with the story. And when I said, Kip, you know, you're, are you, he's so generous. And he's like, no, we're going to do it as co-writers. I'm like, no, I, you can give him, well, I'll take the story. And then I want you to take the screenplay because he really worked hard and did the really, really the meat of this thing. Like, like he said, mine was a real quick, you know, a little bit of supernatural and the ending was kind of what the same ending, but then all the exposition and all the, the some, added some characters and some, all the stuff that you really needed. So he really took this one, the previous one to stay, I, I had written a full script and then did the same thing, gave it to, and then you write. Then it was the same, but we really did co-write that one. And then he went in there and and and, um, and made his changes, added his ideas, added a really pivotal character, uh, which I loved the addition of that character. It made so much so the movie to stay. And um, uh, yeah, so that one I would say we co-wrote. This one right here, I would say it was, it was my story that Kip turned into the, uh, the Rebroken World. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Very interesting. Now, would you say that you had any kind of specific influences, either of you, when you were uh, writing your portion of the story? Like, anything come from anything like a dream or any kind of influences at all? Movie influences that we talk about. Um, I know Scott's mentioned Memento a lot. I I always kind of um, lean towards The Machinist a bit, you know, mm -hmm. as kind of uh, inspirations for for this, you know, from the movie side of things. Um, and not to get too, you know, heavy handed with it, but, um, you know, certainly when I was in the, at least for on my end, when I was in the screenplay phase of things, I, I, I really did want to um, touch on how people deal with grief and the different ways that people deal with grief. And you see that in the, the, the grief counseling group as everyone is at a different stage and everyone deals with it in their own way. And I, I really did make a conscious effort to to try to um, give people something to think about, um, but but also uh, not lingering on it so much where it's just a heavy drama the whole time. Mm -hmm. I mean, the film certainly is heavy, um, but, uh, you know, wanted to make it also about the mystery and the thriller and um, this 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 maze that people are going through. For, for, for me, anything like, like, yeah, it was just... Uh... It was really just at the core. I just had a daughter and it was just for me, the thought of actually losing my daughter, whether temporarily or permanently was just would just put me in like the craziest funk and depression, something that I, I couldn't even imagine experiencing. And then, you know, tried to turn that into a movie that I think a lot of people could identify with. And then also the fact that I don't know if I could accept it and, and what would I do to to if I wasn't accepted of a. Uh, that she was gone and that's kind of where it, where it was for me very good um as far as the writing goes as well uh, how long do you think it took how long it took to write but also how long before you were ready to start the production phase <laughs> this, is a, yeah. this is this is a, <laughs> uh, a, a new, I'll, I'll say this is unusual um, yes. Thankfully. Uh, so normally you'll kick these ideas back and back and forth and you'll take some time to write the script and um get it to where you want it to be. This one, like I, I was, um, I can't remember what I was on at the time, Scott, but I, I was, had been busy. And then Scott and I had been talking about this. He'd sent over the idea, um, you know, so we just were talking at this point about where this could go. And I think we were in sort of getting to, to mid to late June when Scott's like, I, I, the window I have to shoot this movie is at the end of July. And we have got to like be shooting and go. And then I had an extensive trip planned and everything. So long story short, I, I didn't get to start writing the script until after July 4th, um, July 6th specifically. And we were in production shooting rolling cameras on July 25th. So um, it it was an incredibly fast turnaround, um, much faster than we would we would like. But it just yes. that's the way the cards fell, you know, and, and that's just um you know, we, we, we made it work and luckily we've been talking about it enough where, you know, the process was, was right. semi quick. <laughs> we did. And it worked. Kip did an amazing job to do it that fast. Cause it's ridiculous to try to do it that fast. The one thing though, it wasn't like it was just born, you know, on July 1st. Like I had been yeah. going over that story for a while. We, like you said, we've been talking. So we knew yeah. what we wanted. We knew what the elements were. We knew 
how that we wanted to get to A to Z, it was just the, the little the middle parts that really need to open up to turn it into what I had that was a 30 minute episode into an hour and a half movie. And remarkably, Kip was able to do it in that time frame that I have between being able to be available to work on it myself and Kip to be available and the, um, getting the investors at the right time to come in. And uh, I don't know, it just, uh, it, well, there was a million reasons it had to be right then. So um, we were under yeah. the gun and Kip was really under the gun. He, he came out with what I think was a great script. Great. Um, now, kind of going into the production itself, it's directed by Kenny Yates, who plays kind of a mm-hmm. smaller role in the movie. Uh, as writers, do you think that he did a pretty good job realizing the vision that you had for it? Yeah. You know, I think Kenny even took it a cut above because... Uh, yeah. Kenny was also, you know, really huge in the editing process. And this one was so hard because it's this puzzle that you have to put together without giving certain things away. And then uh, also the puzzle at the, for the big reveal at the end. And so I thought he did a great job. He brought some ideas that I personally didn't see. And, you know, it's just like everything that you, you your story or that you write. It, it, some things, you know, had to go. And you're like, oh, no. But then some things he brought with to it that I was like, oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. uh, Kenny, uh, I thought, did a fantastic job. Yeah. And we're so grateful to have him. And, and, and we were able to bring him on in, in June to also start talking about some of the ideas before we started scripting as well. And yes. you know, I'd known Kenny for a while. We met on a film in 2019, and he had kind of come in to fill, fill in on the production side. And, um, you know, we, we he and I now have personally done 13 films together. You know, he's, he's he and I produced a lot together been on screen together and he had been talking about wanting to direct a feature film and when this came out up scott and i were chatting that you know we thought it would be a, a really good fit to to have this be kenny's uh, you know first first uh, feature directing gig and um he, he jumped all over it one of the things that kenny really really brought out in this war were the um flashbacks of reliving a tragic night there's a there's a lot of this that happens in flashes um, throughout the film, and I don't want to give too much away, mm-hmm. but um, Kenny really elevated those moments um, and connected those dots um, really clearly for, um, I, I believe, for the viewer, whereas in the script, it wasn't as clear, but he really he really brought that home. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad you did bring up the, uh, the editing a little bit because in, in a lot of ways, Kip, you're kind of a triple threat, quadruple in a way, if you want to put it, because co-wrote, right? Uh, you yeah. produced it, you co-starred mm-hmm. it in a pretty pivotal role, but you're also credited as editor. Yeah. Uh, at least on IMDb. Um, I am. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I did want to mention that because I really did enjoy the editing. It's the first Good. thing that popped out to me when I watched oh, the movie. That's right. Yes. And that stayed from beginning to end. I thought the editing was really, really good, especially for a movie that does feature uh, a main character that's stuck in a rut, stuck in a cycle. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes in terms of shooting and editing that's kind of at stake a little bit that I feel like maybe you had some challenges with. So if you could Mm -hmm. speak on the editing, uh, how much of that did you do with Kenny? Because you said that Kenny did Mm -hmm. a little bit of the editing process. Uh, And yeah. Yeah, so um, we knew I was going to be the editor as well um, going in. In the scripting phase, uh, it's interesting because we, uh, I I in particular knew that this was going to be a puzzle that was going to be written a certain way, but it was not going to come out in the editing process the same way, because this is something that you can visualize to a certain degree in your head as you're writing it and just trying to get all the scenes and the pieces there. But in editing, it may not flow the same way once you have all your footage together. So I did the first, um, you know, my first couple cuts, um, you know, sent over to Scott and Kenny for notes. Um, We were doing this remotely. And then once we got it to where it was, you know, pretty close, um, then I sat down with Kenny for you know, we sat down probably for about a week straight every day and um, Kenny got his director's cut basically. So we sat there and just started ripping scenes from the third act and putting them in the first act and moving some of Lydia's, the character of Lydia's stuff to the first act because that was sprinkled throughout the script. Um, so we did just a lot of, um, you know, we just jumbled things, uh, you know, a, a lot of the scenes. And um, so that's something that uh, Kenny and I did together, you know, after I, I did the initial few passes on the on the picture cut. 
And uh, so by the end of that week, he had his editor's cut or his director's cut, you know, and we had a film that uh, we were all happy with. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, again, I really did enjoy uh, the editing. I I kept on thinking back to like time loop movies where Mm. um, actors would be playing the same thing over and over, over again at the same spot, same spot, same spot. Like Scott, your character at the liquor store over and over and over again, walking down the hill, walking down the hill, walking down the hill. And I wondered if when you were shooting it, you just literally went back and you shot the same thing over and over again uh, and then threw it into the editing so that it felt more realistic. Yeah, we did. It definitely, you know, we get you're going to do multiple takes anyway. And then I think we just would do when we when we had something set up, we would we would do it that way, especially because it wasn't really any wardrobe changes or anything. It didn't have to be different days like according to wardrobe so we'd be like you know yeah do it again then do it again this time do it super sad this time do it less sad this time do it so they you know so they had some choices and just some little subtle differences so you know you couldn't it didn't look like we were just putting the same thing over and over (laughs) but yeah it was a lot of takes and so these guys i'm so glad Dave, that you in your review and uh here today that you acknowledge the editing because i totally agree with you that that was this the hardest thing and it was also the hugest thing and probably my my favorite thing to come out of this is the work that kip did and then with kenny's assistance with the edit because man if you could see in the first pass to what it became it's incredible so uh they worked really really hard and, and it, it was pretty fantastic and yeah they they uh they deserve uh all the kudos on that and and, and on that um note as far as the repetition one thing that Kenny and our our great DP, um, Nathan Stifler, did, is they would adjust camera every time, you know, so it wasn't just multiple takes of the same angle, same shot. It was, you know, adjusting whether it's, um, you know, a a tighter shot or or a wider shot, whatever it was, or a different angle. So, So it, that along with the different emotions Scott was going through at the time, you know, it read as a different different day so that's one thing you know and we were on a tight schedule so you know all those things were um were plotted out really well from kenny and nate's side of things yes yes absolutely what would you guys say is just in general your favorite scene of the movie either in shooting it or just kind of watching it back um my i i have a favorite it's not a scene specifically it's a favorite favorite scene i did was a scene where scott and i are out at the tents uh my character brian and scott's character will out at the tents that, that's just a favorite scene that that we did together just because i like the way that it looked the feel the the moment that it happens in the film um pivotal moment but uh it, one of my favorite shots and it's an edit in the film is where uh, scott's character is looking at the painting and then we match cut that to bella um sitting there staring at him that that's always been a favorite of mine yeah uh but mine's like it'd be so hard to pick something because it's like your kids you got to pick a favorite kid there's so many aspects that i love i had such a fun time but something that sticks out to me every time that i watch it i will tell you is this is when the little red ball rolls up to my feet Mm. and then kind of stops on its own and then curls around my foot and then which which turned out to be great (laughs) But we had these stupid balls that did not roll right. <laughs> and so we all were rolling that thing. We had so many different people from the crew and cast coming around going, give me that ball. I'll roll it to his feet, right? We could not get it to roll straight. Yeah, they just, they just do not roll. Yeah. It, it just, it's the weirdest ball I've ever seen. We didn't have another, we didn't have another red one. We didn't have like a backup. It's, it, it, and it, it was just rolled wrong every time because it was too light. And we all, we must have been trying it like 30 times. And then finally that one, it was off again. We're like, oh, here we go. This one's off. And all of a sudden it just kind of like magically yeah. turned and moved around and came back the other way in some weird, and I'm like, we were like, that's going to look pretty cool. Like it's a haunted ball, like moving to, so every time I see that stupid ball roll perfectly <laughs> back, I look at that and go, man, that, that, that was, yeah. that was fun and frustrating. And look how great that turned out. We did. Because we were just trying to roll it straight into my feet, and that was going to be yeah. not roll it straight. So all that little extra stuff that it did was just uh, pure luck. I mean, in, I, in I fairness, it, in fairness, it was a it was a pretty far distance that we were trying to get that to land and roll. But and <laughs> credit goes to our production assistant Chelsea Cater. She was the one who who yeah. got the the perfect roll. Oh, she, was it her? Oh man, that thing. That, 
Yeah. It was just such a weird warped ball, and it was so light. It, it just it, anything will push it any way on its own. Yeah, I remember, it was it was oh a garbage God. ball. It was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrible ball. I feel like I should talk about the elephant in the in the room here. We okay, so the poster. I feel like everybody can start watching this movie because of who is on the poster. We got yes. Tobin Bell. Yes. Yes. Tobin Bell, who played Jigsaw in the Saw franchise and continues to play Jigsaw. How was it uh, playing opposite him, Scott, first of all? I know, Kip, you worked with him in the past, um, but Scott, I believe it's your first time working with him. So how was it working with him, and how did how, how'd you get him to uh, agree to this one? Yeah, man. I, I, I was first of all, it was super exciting for me. Um, I've been lucky to to work with some pretty cool people in my career, and, and Tobin for me is up there. First of all, how we got him was was that, like you said, Kip had worked with him before, and when we were going through our wish list for actors to play that part, we had these different lists, and then you have to kind of cut them down to who's really a possibility, and then uh, and then Tobin came up. And I was like, Kip, what do you think? You think we can reach out? And he's like, Yeah, I get along pretty good with the manager. Let's reach out. Let's. And then it was really as easy as that. Kip reached out. He laid the groundwork down, gave her the details, and then she said, Send the script and a couple base codes. And he's he's available. And he loved the script. And he'd like to be a part of it. And we both were like, What? Okay, that's freaking awesome. That so was it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was really it was really that that simple. And it's a testament to Kip's script too. And uh, for me, yeah, the first day that he came on set, like I said, I was super excited. I was a fan, and I'm not a fan so much from the Saw movies. I'm a fan from his other stuff. Like, I loved him in The Firm and in The Line of Fire and, and Mississippi Burning. Those, I just always think of him from those, and I always loved his characters. I thought he was such a scene stealer and such a just, just such a presence. And he, he was like that in person, too, but not right when you meet him. Right when you meet him, we talked uh, talked about baseball and 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 some other little fun stuff and then uh, yeah. my, my biggest takeaway was how professional he was as far as he could easily come in and be like yeah this is a little film i do the, these big movies and we're coming into your little film and let's go get it together guys it was just the opposite he was off book he yeah. knew the, the material he was a pleasure to work with and very complimentary of, of people that uh when they deserved it and it, uh, he was just uh, he was fantastic man it was such a great experience yeah. for me and i learned a lot yeah it's just incredible Awesome, uh, and like I mentioned before, Kip, you worked with him in was it Wolf Mountain? Wolf from Mountain. I saw? Yeah. I'm not familiar with that uh, movie, but now I kind of want to see it. Comes it. out in uh, <laughs> comes out in April, so okay, it hasn't, gotcha. has not been released. That's yet. why I'm not familiar with it. Right. All right, yeah. uh, I'll be on the lookout for that one. I think that for the most part, Tobin did a, a pretty good job. He's that mysterious stranger that you often see sometimes yeah. Yeah. in in kind of horror. Uh, genres and stuff like that and he did a great job as he always does so we always love Tobin and everything like you mentioned yeah. doesn't have to be Saw actually the first thing right. that I saw him in was Alias the TV show oh yeah uh -huh. he was in that um, so in the future what are you guys uh, what are you guys working on that we can, everybody can uh, be on the lookout for obviously Wolf Mountain is one <laughs> Yeah, Wolf Mountain. I've got another film coming out in April as well called Hunt Club. Um, did that last year, Mississippi, with uh, Mickey Rourke, Mina Savari, Casper Van Dien. Um, I play a role in that, also produced it. Um, and then Scott Kenny and I just did, um, I produced a film that Scott's a lead in and Kenny directed called um, Christmas Gamble, and that uh, we shot that in December. And so that's in post right now and uh look for that around christmas time so that that's the immediate stuff we got going on i just finished up a western um you know a few weeks ago uh as well so that was that was a lot of fun very cool very busy yeah he's yeah, got a lot of projects I, I feel like he needs to cast me more but you know we'll we'll, we'll talk we'll talk <laughs> I, about i wish that. i had control over that we'll talk i'm kidding but we'll, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that off camera uh, yeah, right. yeah. We did. We just finished one. Another. He does a lot of stuff on his own, and I love when we get to partner. And yeah, Christmas Gamble is is going to be coming out at the end of the year, and uh, we were lucky enough to get a couple other people that I've been a fan of forever. We have Michael Madsen playing one of the leads, and um, um, it's a little more of like an edgy comedy. So we also have the uh, legendary Tom Arnold is in there as well. So uh, it's um, we we hope it's going to be a good one. And then yeah, we're just uh, I'm trying to get um, uh, another uh, kind of more of a thriller. Back to our back to our pocket. All uh, right, get things going. Get greenlit on this thriller for uh, maybe shoot this summer if we can fit it in the schedule again. Uh, it's kind of like a true crime 
uh, podcaster uh, type of deal. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be back at it this summer again. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, but yeah, that is all the questions that I got for you both. Appreciate it. But everybody that's watching, make sure that you get a lookout for uh, Rebroken, which again, March 7th, um, pretty much everywhere that you can get things digitally, I'm yep. sure. And uh, yeah, again, guys, thanks for, for joining me. It's been uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been okay. fun. And uh, thanks for good having luck us, on David. all those future endeavors. I will be keeping my eye out on them. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having us. Thanks for taking the time to watch the movie. Thank you for reviewing it. And uh, we really appreciate it. And everybody out there, yeah, please help Indie Film out. Go out there, check it out. You can pre-order it now. And then when it, when it comes out, please. And yeah, if you like it, you know, go on Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and rate it, review yes, it. Yes, leave that a review. Out. That's huge. These little independent movies, it helps us out so much. Yeah. You know, if you don't like it, stay away. No, I'm kidding. Go on right. there, rate and review. Do, it. <laughs> do whatever you want to do, man. Go on there. We can take it. So, uh Yep. We hope everyone likes it, and we hope everyone will, uh, will, will will give us a give us a look, and then yeah, give us some rates and reviews, man. We appreciate it. Yep. Perfect. All right, guys. Yep. Thank you.